people then among the horrible details from today's bond hearing, prosecutors revealing that the victim's torso has yet to be found. What? Chicago police on Monday finding Fran Walker's severed head and limbs in a boarding house freezer. What kind of shit is that? Today in court, a Cook County prosecutor told the judge Walker put an eviction notice on Paula Lou's door Sunday and that other tenants heard the two arguing. The basement tenant heard the defendant screaming and what sounded like a dish breaking. The basement tenant heard the victim's voice trying to calm the defendant down and that was the last time she heard the victim's voice. The prosecutor said police were called to the house three times on Monday to check on Walker. The third time discovered some of Walker's body parts in the freezer. You know you don't fucked up, right? What's up, y'all? It's Kelly West. Thank you for tuning in to another episode. Please like, share, and subscribe to my channel. Feeling this shit. So check this out. I don't know if y'all heard about the woman who dismembered her landlord two days after getting an eviction notice. Bitch, what the fuck? Instead of this young lady, Sandra Kalalu, just going to a homeless shelter, you know, maybe checking up with a family member or a friend, or maybe even submitting to her boyfriend or her ex-boyfriend, she decided that she would have false pride and take this 69 year old woman's life. The lady lived all the way up to 69, owned a home and had other people living in the residence only to be taken out by one of the roommates that was renting a home from her. Damn. What I find ironic is woman like this, when you meet them in the club, they're quick to say that you're broke, you know, just because you ain't in VIP, or because you pull up on them and you don't have a Mercedes Benz or a luxury foreign car. They want to say that you ain't got enough money for them. But these are the same women who are scraping up ends meat to try to make up rent at the end of the month. Oh, no, no, no. What's really just kind of, I mean, it's, what's ironic is women, especially black women, want to say that they're strong and independent. But if you were strong and independent, you wouldn't have, you know, women like this wouldn't have to be stuck in a hard place to go decide that she's gonna go and take a woman's life instead of doing what she has to do. I mean, shit, maybe she was doing her best and maybe she couldn't do enough. That's why women have depended on men for generations because at the end of the day, you know, if a woman's not good with money, she might need a little bit of help from her man, shit. Sometimes men need help from a woman, you know, with the finances as well. But, you know, every team, everyone has to play their position. My nigga. <laughs> Obviously, she couldn't be part of a team. That's actually why she already had prior charges in the past for, you know, domestic violence and things as such. She obviously is hard-headed. She has a bad temper. It was even heard on the news that it was heard from the basement about how the landlord was trying to calm her down. But that's the thing. When you deal with these bastard hounds, there's no calming them down because they're all about emotion. That's one negative thing I could ever say about our people is that they're very quick to be 
all in their emotions and not, you know, think a little better. Because if you look at this, if you look at her mug shot, she is like scared shitless. Yeah, I might not feel bad for her, but you can just tell that she knows that she truly fucked up.